Greetings, Andrew with Evermore Studio here to demonstrate a method for scoring both sides of a piece of paper or cardstock using the laser. First off, if you're asking why you might want to do this for fold lines on paper instead of just scoring everything on one side, fold lines tend to break more easily away from the scored side. When you're doing intricate folding, like for origamic architecture style pop-up cards, it's good to take any help you can get when encouraging tiny bits of paper to fold in the desired direction. In this demo, I'm drawing a pencil line to make it easier to keep track of the score lines visually. After drawing the lines, I immediately score the same lines using the blunt backside of my craft knife. When I fold away from the score, notice that the paper breaks immediately, forming a sharp fold with very little effort. By contrast, when I fold against the score, it doesn't really break completely. I would have to put additional pressure on the fold directly to get it to crease as much as the first piece, and it would still result in a rougher looking fold line. You need to score the mountain folds on the front and the valley folds on the back. Let's check out one way to do that with the laser cutter. I'm using my Glowforge here, but this technique should work with pretty much any appropriate laser. It is important to minimize opportunities for your pieces to move in relation to the mechanism of the laser cutter. While the Glowforge tray stays in place pretty well, there's enough wiggle room for it to move a few millimeters in any direction. Glowforge form regular Tim J. Edwards has come up with a very simple mechanism you can cut from scrap to reduce the potential movement of the tray to almost nothing. I highly recommend it if you're going to do this sort of thing. I'll put a link to the file and instructions below. For our main demonstration here, I'm going to use the XOXO card I designed in 2019. If you want to follow along, you can download the pattern for free from the Evermore Studio site and watch a walkthrough video of how to fold it. Links below. I'm going to gang eight of these cards and cut them all at once. After you're sure of your technique, it's a lot less hassle to do a batch and not have to set up for scoring the reverse multiple times. I'm using a sec lima mat here to hold my stock in place while cutting and scoring. It keeps everything in place and keeps cutout bits from flying around and interfering with other cuts. I'm a big fan, but they are a bit expensive and there are alternatives. More on that in a bit. For this pass on the front, I am scoring the mountain folds. That is, the folds that break away from the front side of the card forming mountains. The valley folds will be scored on the reverse and their operation has been disabled for this run. I love my laser, but even I don't want to watch a video of it cutting for 10 minutes, so we'll just power through this with some video editing. After unloading the cards that have been scored on the front and cut, I'll load a new sheet of stock. In the interface, I set up a single copy of the card flipped horizontally. I disable everything except the cut operation for the card outline, so we will be cutting a plain rectangle of stock the same size as the cards we just cut. Once the cut is finished, I remove everything except the card. This acrylic angle I made will be our positioning jig. Essentially, we need something like a right angle that will let us consistently put the cut cards exactly where this rectangular card we just cut is. It doesn't have to be fancy, but this is easy to make and use. I'll put a link to the design file below. While this angle has fiducial marks for a beta glowforge feature, note that we are not using them here. I position the angle against the edges of the card, make sure it is in place, and remove the card. One of the cards we cut, flipped just like in the interface, goes in its place. I am very careful with all of this not to do anything that would move the mat or the tray in the machine. Next, we adjust the settings so that everything except the valley folds are disabled. Note that the image and the interface may not align perfectly with the piece we just loaded. Your camera can deceive you. Don't trust it. And don't move the design in the interface. If nothing has been moved, it should cut in exactly the same place as before. This microscope image shows the upper part of the O we just scored, next to a ruler marked in millimeters. 
As you see, we got hairline alignment of the score lines on the reverse. If you're not going to use a Seclema mat, you can make something similar with a temporary adhesive and a sheet of something like MDF. I like using the temporary spray adhesive intended for holding fabric in place while screen printing. I can cover the details in a future video if you are interested. In some cases, you can skip the mat entirely. Here I am going through the same process just using magnets. For the actual card, you will need to be careful about positioning the magnets so that they do not touch any areas that should score. Distance to the material and the type and shape of the magnets can be factors. I should also note here there is a certain alchemy to working with magnets in the Glowforge. Magnets near where the machine is cutting can interfere with the air assist fan, triggering an error that aborts the print. Despite your best efforts, you may not always get your angle jig positioned perfectly. When your score lines on the reverse aren't quite aligned, if you can quantify the amount and direction of the misalignment, you can often adjust the positioning in the user interface for the laser software. Here, for example, I moved the design a sixteenth of an inch to the right with the GFUI Absolute Positioning Tool. My next attempt will be one sixteenth of an inch to the right of the last attempt. This is all a lot of effort for a small number of score lines, so I often score the reverse sides of cards using other techniques. When you have a lot of small fiddly folds like the arch on the O's here though, this can really save time. As I've hinted, there are other ways to do this. This is a fairly simple approach that works well in many cases. If you have alternatives or suggestions for improvement, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. As always, if you found this useful, a like and subscribe will encourage me to do more of this sort of thing.